When a wolf forms a strong bond with a woman, the two become inseparable. But when the woman dies in a tragic accident, the wolf refuses to leave her coffin. Her friends become worried and ask the doctor to check out the body. When he looks closely, he quickly calls the cops. It didn't seem to matter how much fuss everyone made. The wolf just wouldn't move. It had first appeared at the woman's funeral when all the mourners started to arrive. Everyone was aware of the wolf's connection to the deceased woman, Maggie, so it didn't seem overly strange that the animal had appeared, but its behavior was now becoming increasingly odd. At first, the wolf had laid by the coffin, letting out soft cries. Everyone assumed that the poor animal could sense she was gone. After all, Maggie had a special bond with the wolf. But when Maggie's ex-boyfriend Tony turned up, the wolf began to growl at him and jumped on top of Maggie's coffin, scratching at the lid furiously. No one minded the wolf being there until it started scratching at the coffin. It wasn't dignified, and they couldn't let it carry on behaving like that, so they tried to encourage the animal to get down. But no matter what they did, the animal refused to move. Now it seemed to be growing more irate, its sharp claws causing grooves in the lid of the coffin. Something was obviously bothering the animal. Maggie's friends began to question whether someone should open the coffin and try to work out what was upsetting the wolf, but when Tony heard of their plan, he shut down the idea straight away. Something had to be done though. The funeral couldn't go ahead with the wolf acting as it was. So, against Tony's wishes, it was decided that Maggie's coffin should be opened up. Sensing that he'd finally gotten people's attention, the wolf stepped down from the coffin and began to do his soft whimpers again. As soon as the lid was pulled back, the animal began to nudge Maggie's hand. And before anyone could stop it, the wolf lay on top of Maggie, refusing to leave her. No one could see anything out of the ordinary, so they called the local doctor over to have a look at Maggie's body. After just a few moments, the doctor's face went pale, and he pulled out his phone to quickly call the cops. Sensing victory, the wolf let out a long howl. Maggie had lived on the edge of the woods for a long time now. She'd grown up in the nearby village, but had always loved the outdoors, so no one was surprised when she built a beautiful log cabin and moved in. She was an artist, and being outdoors surrounded by nature was always her best inspiration. Maggie's parents had died when she was only 17, and it was the money that they left her that she used to build the cabin. Her parents had owned a successful business, but Maggie had no interest in taking over. She always knew she wanted to be an artist, so she'd sold the business for a substantial amount of money. Losing her parents at such a young age had been hard, but everyone in the village had rallied around to support her. Even now, all these years later, she was still close to everyone in the village. They had become her family. In turn, Maggie used her large amount of savings to ensure the village had everything it needed. Tony, on the other hand, had recently moved to the village from the city. It wasn't often anyone came to such a remote place, and usually homes stayed within families, but he told everyone he was looking for a new start after a tough breakup, and everyone welcomed him with open arms. When he laid eyes on Maggie for the first time, he swore it was love at first sight. Maggie had been quite content on her own, but she found Tony charming and funny, and before long the pair began dating. But Maggie liked her alone time and the solitude of the forest, and so she refused to live with Tony. It didn't take long for her to notice that Tony was frequently asking for help with money. At first, she figured he was just trying to get back on his feet, but as more time passed by, he didn't seem to be making any effort to get a job. Mostly, he made excuses. The pair ended their relationship several times, but Tony would always find an excuse for his behavior, and Maggie ended up taking him back. But she was growing tired of that life. She was too old for games, and part of her regretted ever agreeing to date Tony. Life had been much simpler before he came along. One day, Maggie was out walking in the woods. She had a lot on her mind recently. She wanted to end things with Tony for good, but couldn't figure out how. As such, she lost all love for her artwork and figured a nice long walk might clear her head and give her some fresh inspiration. When she stepped into a clearing in the trees, Maggie's heart nearly pounded out of her chest when she saw what was right in front of her, a wolf 
She'd never come so close to one before, and she was terrified. The woman started to back away, hoping to make her escape, but the wolf never moved. Instead, it just looked at her with pleading eyes. That was when she noticed the poor animal had a huge cut on its leg. The woman instantly felt sorry for the animal. It must have been in so much pain and was looking for help. Maggie cautiously approached to get a better look and figured that with her medical kit, she would be able to clean the wound and bandage it. She said all of this out loud, even though she knew the wolf couldn't understand her. But much to her surprise, the wolf lay down on the floor as if it knew exactly what she just said. Luckily, she hadn't been out long, so it wouldn't take long to get back to her house. She rushed back home, grabbed her medical kit, and made it back to the clearing in 30 minutes. The wolf had stayed in the same place as if he knew Maggie would come back for him. The kind woman knelt down in front of the wolf and tentatively began to clean the wound. She was worried about how the animal would react, but beyond a few instinctive jerks when the wound was stinging, the animal remained calm and let Maggie get on with things. She was surprised at first, but she quickly forgot about the strangeness of the situation to focus on treating the wolf's injury. Once the wound was clean, she carefully bandaged it up. She had no idea whether it would do any good. The wolf was a wild animal after all, and the bandage could easily come off but at least she'd done her best. Maggie packed up her medical kit and gave the wolf a little scratch on the head. The animal responded with a gentle tap on her leg with its front paws. Maggie smiled. It was almost like the wolf was saying thanks. She was sure that now she was done, the wolf would walk away, but the animal made no attempt to move. So she turned and began to walk back towards her cabin. She'd only gone a few steps when she noticed the wolf was cautiously following her. The woman laughed and said, Oh, all right, you can come with me and I'll get you some food. But once your leg is healed, you'll need to leave. She couldn't believe it. She'd somehow ended up bringing the wolf home. When she got back to her cabin, the wolf explored outside whilst Maggie went to get some meat and water for it. She stepped back outside, but the animal was nowhere to be seen. But then, Maggie heard a low howl coming from her small storage barn where she kept her firewood. When she poked her head around the door, the wolf had gotten himself settled inside. I guess this is where you're sleeping then, she laughed. For the next few weeks, the wolf would spend his time exploring close to Maggie's cottage, but at night he would sleep in her barn. He seemed to still be able to hunt, which pleased Maggie, as she didn't want the wild animal to become reliant on her. She made sure to clean his wound and change the dressing daily, and before long his leg had completely healed. But the wolf wasn't ready to completely leave Maggie. The two had formed a strong bond, and even though he was better now and spent more time away from her cabin, he always came back to the barn to sleep. In the time she'd been looking after the wolf, Maggie hadn't once thought of Tony. When she realized this, she knew it told her everything she needed to know. It was time to end things with him once and for all. But Tony wasn't going to make things easy. He begged her to rethink, promising to get a job and repay all the money he'd borrowed from her. But Maggie stood firm. It was over between them. That night, Maggie was curled up on the couch reading a book when she heard a growling sound coming from outside her cabin. She pulled back the curtain and saw the wolf emerging from the barn as a man ran off back towards the village. Maggie knew exactly who had been hanging around outside her cabin. It was Tony, and the thought unnerved her. She'd never been more glad to have the wolf around. The next day, she went into the village and bought extra locks for her door. By now, everyone had heard that Maggie had somehow ended up adopting a wolf, so when she went to the village, everyone was curious to know more. She told them how the wolf had been injured and how he'd somehow become like her guard dog now. She told a few close friends about Tony turning up at the cabin, and they all felt better that she had the wolf for protection. Her friends had never really liked Tony, believing that he'd been using her for money, and now she was beginning to think that they might have been right. But something was about to happen that would shock everyone. Maggie's favorite place to sit was by the lake. It was such a beautiful spot, and she could spend hours there drawing and painting or on warmer days just soaking up the sun. It was such a quiet spot with an abundance of wildlife, and the woman never grew bored of going there. 
One morning when Maggie woke up and saw that it had snowed overnight, she knew there was only one place she wanted to go, the lake. As she pulled on her warmest coat and her snow boots, she opened her door and smiled to herself. She could see the wolf's paw prints going from the barn into the forest. Clearly, she wasn't the only one exploring in the snow today. She packed a flask of coffee and some snacks into her bag and then decided it was probably too cold to sit and draw for any length of time, so she decided to take her camera out instead. She'd created some artwork based on the photos she took, but just a few hours later, a passerby would find Maggie's body floating in the shallows of the lake. When news reached the village that Maggie was dead, no one could believe it. She had lived in the forest for years, she'd experienced all kinds of weather and knew how to safely navigate everything. It didn't make any sense that she'd slipped on the snow and fallen into the water. But who were they to argue? The whole village went into mourning. When the wolf returned to the barn that night, he let out a long howl, as though he knew Maggie would never be coming back. The day of the woman's funeral arrived, and as the mourners gathered, an unexpected guest showed up. The wolf. Everyone in the village knew about the special bond between Maggie and the animal, but it had never come into the village before. People were taken aback at first, but then they realized the poor animal was probably mourning too. After all, when he spotted the coffin, he lay next to it and began to let out sad cries. It was only when Tony arrived that the wolf's behavior changed. Her friends had tried to discourage Tony from coming to the funeral. In the last few months, Maggie had become increasingly scared of him. She confessed that she'd seen him hanging around near the cabin a few times since the first incident, but thankfully the wolf always chased him away. But Tony had seemed genuinely upset when he heard about Maggie, and her friends didn't have the energy to fight with him. But seemingly, they weren't the only ones that didn't want Tony there. As soon as the wolf spotted Tony, he began to growl at the man, and then he jumped on top of Maggie's coffin as if to guard her, just like he'd done whenever Tony showed up at the cabin. But what the wolf did next shocked everyone. The animal was scratching so hard at the coffin lid that he was causing deep grooves in the wood, and now an argument was brewing between Maggie's friends and Tony. The friends figured there was a reason for the wolf's odd behavior, and maybe if the coffin was opened up and the animal could see that Maggie was really gone, then it might settle down. But Tony was furious at the idea. In the end, the friends figured out Tony didn't really have a say in the matter, and they ordered the coffin to be opened up. As soon as the wolf could see Maggie's body, he began to nudge her hand. Then, before anyone could stop him, the animal laid down on top of her. Everyone assumed he must really miss her, and her friends couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. But still, something gnawed at them, and they scanned the room of mourners looking for the village doctor just to get a second opinion. The doctor approached Maggie's body, and the wolf still refused to leave, but he let the doctor carry out his checks. It didn't take long for a concerned look to wash across his face. He frowned, and then pressed his fingers against Maggie's neck. The doctor's face went pale, and he scrambled in his pocket looking for his phone. Without saying a word to anyone, he quickly called the cops. By now, everyone was desperate to know what was going on. Sensing that he'd done his job, the wolf let out a long howl. But in the confusion, no one noticed that Tony was attempting to leave the funeral undetected. Just as he reached the doors, the wolf sprung out of the coffin and threw himself at the man, just as the cops arrived shortly, followed by an ambulance. The whole funeral was now a scene of chaos. The doctor turned to the mourners, still pale and shaking, and uttered the words, Maggie is alive. Gasps erupted around the room as the woman was taken out of the coffin and rushed to the hospital in the ambulance. But there was still the matter of Tony and the wolf to deal with. The animal still had Tony pinned down, and suddenly the friends realized that the wolf had known Maggie was still alive. Thinking back to how Maggie had been scared of Tony and the wolf's reactions to him, they realized that he'd somehow been involved in Maggie's accident. But the police obviously couldn't use a wolf's behavior as evidence of foul play. They were willing to take into account that Tony had been turning up at Maggie's cabin though, so they decided to take him in for questioning. 
It didn't take long for Tony to crumble under their questioning, and he confessed everything. When he moved to the village, he'd heard how rich Maggie was and had started a relationship with her in an attempt to get as much money from her as possible. When she'd finally ended things and cut him off, he'd grown angry. He'd been turning up at the cabin hoping to scare her, but when he saw her by the lake, he saw the perfect opportunity. He'd shoved Maggie into the water and left her for dead. What no one had taken into account was that Maggie actually had hypothermia and her vital signs had become undetectable. In the warmth of the coffin, Maggie had warmed back up and her normal bodily functions had resumed. The wolf wasn't just missing Maggie, he'd been able to sense that she was alive. The cops immediately arrested Tony for attempted murder. Things weren't looking good for Maggie, but under the fantastic care of the doctors she pulled through, no one could believe what had happened. When Maggie moved back to the cabin, the wolf did too. The woman owed her life to the wolf and didn't even want to think about what would have happened if they didn't have such a strong bond. With Tony in prison, Maggie didn't have anything to be worried about, but the wolf never left her side. He would still go out and explore, but he was never too far away from the cabin, just in case his friend needed him. Maggie and the wolf had a bond that couldn't be explained. They would spend the rest of their lives looking out for one another. Now it's over to you. What do you think of this story? How do you think the wolf knew Tony was responsible? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.